Hi, this is Ratan Gupta from Knowledge Varsity and today I will be discussing about the return concept. So what we have is we have in this Excel sheet we will want to understand about the, this data set and we want to know the return that is generated by this data set. So if you see this is the data set of the nifty returns. We have date over here. We have the closing prices over here. So on 1st January 2008 the closing price of nifty was 5137 on 1st January 2009 the closing price of nifty was 2874 now how do we compute the return that is generated by nifty in this year 2008 okay so what we have is to compute the return we have a concept of holding period return when we say that the holding period return or HPR is equal to price at the end of the period minus price at the beginning of the period divided by price at the beginning of the period right so this is your re return divided by the original price. Now holding period return can be computed for any period. Please note that this is your holding period. Okay, period holding period can be daily, okay, uh, one day holding period, one month holding period, week holding period or year holding period, even quarterly holding period. You can ho have holding period of one second, one hour or five hours, whatever you would want to. Okay, so it is just the price at the end of the period minus price at the beginning of the period divided by price at the beginning of the period. Let us try to see if you use this concept in Excel how we can compute the return for the various years. So what we have is we have to compute the return for 2008. Now how do you compute? For 2008 you would be computing. Okay. So what we have is we'll compute So we would want to compute the return for 2008. So how do we compute it? So we'll say that this is the year. So we have to compute the return in 2008. How we compute? So this will be for 2008. This will be the e ending price. This is the beginning price. So what we'll do is we'll say ending price minus beginning price divided by the beginning price. So this gives you the return. So what happens is this is minus 0.44. However, usually the percentage is talked in terms of percentage. So it makes sense if we format this using the Excel functionalities. So if you go over here, you see that there is a percentage given over here. If you bring the mouse, what it says is its percentage style. And there is a shortcut also mentioned control shift percentage. So you don't have to like really go over here, but you can use the shortcut to change this to percentage. Let's see how it works. If I click this percentage, so what happens is this has become minus 44, but it has reduced the significance level or what we say is like after the decimal places, I am not seeing anything. Okay, so it would be good if I can see the values after the decimal places. So what I will do is I will select this and if you see over here, these are the two things to increase. This is to increase the decimal places. This is to decrease the decimal places. So if I go over here, what it says, the tooltip says that increase decimal. Show more precise value by showing more decimal places. What I would do is I will press this. So it has increased by one. Press this, it has increased by two. Usually we would want this type of data in two decimal places. So it has worked wonderfully. So this is good. Okay. Now another side type of formatting you may have is you can make it bold. So that is a better thing. So it is looking like a bold one. Another formatting that you can do is you can put it in terms of the accounting data. Okay. So in accounting data, what happens is it will show you but it will show you in the bracket or it will show you in the red. Okay. But since here we talk in terms of percentage, we would not want to do the accounting. Just I showed that you can uh, think about this. Later we'll do the formatting. Ideally, I would want you it, this to be formatted like red. Okay. But the intent is to understand about the uh, computation over here. So let's say if you want to compute the return for 2009, what we'll do is we'll say equal to 
then this is my ending price minus this is the beginning price divided by this okay so again it will give me the same return so similar type 0 0.69 however this is not a good uh, way as we have seen so we will have to change this way and then increase the decimal okay so this is one way to do however it will take you too much time so what we can do is like once we have formatted a cell we would want that formatting to be consistent across wherever we are using so we have one tool in excel that is known as format painter so if you scroll on the format painter it shows that the tooltip says copy formatting from one place and applying it to another so that is a tooltip so what we can do is we can select this and we can select wherever we would want to change to this format okay so you just saw the change so if you see i'm putting control z so this this is 69.82 but it has just become bold okay so what i can do is i can use this format painter to select to do all this computation now if you see the next one i will press equal to this minus this divided by this so i don't have to go again and do so it is automatically converted in the two decimal places percentage however here what we are lacking is we are not using the functionality of excel okay excel is a very good tool it helps you in utilizing the formula that you have used over here to be used across wherever you would want to so if you if you have used this formula we can use it over here without computing again so what i'll do is i'll delete this okay let's go over here and try to bring your mouse to this point okay so you are seeing this over here as square try to bring once you bring it the cross sign which is thick one it changes to thin cross sign okay so this is called as fill fill symbol so you can use this fill symbol okay click over here left click and draw drop this down okay so what you are seeing is that fill is extended till here and the formatting remains the same perfect one and this has given me the return for year 2008 2009 can okay, you see want to see the power of fill you will be able to see here so we have got the return of 2008 9 10 11 12 all the returns that was required by me okay so these are the returns that i have got you can format this like this so we have this now next one it is asking me to compute the average return generated by nifty over this last 5 years so if you see these are the last 5 years okay i want to know what is the average return that is generated many of you would be tempted to use the average function of nifty okay let's say if i use the average function of nifty okay or average formula okay you will see i can select this so it will give me average from c3 to c7 okay and it is giving me 9.74% okay so this average which we have computed is known as arithmetic average however please note that in case of written data this arithmetic average does not do justice okay this is not a meaningful measure it is it is much more than what is the actual return okay so if you want to know what is the actual return we will have to understand about a new concept which is known as geometric mean concept so we have to understand about the geometric mean so you have heard about the geometric mean in your school days okay so geometric mean for let's say x1 x2 and x3 three values is given as root over x1 x2 and x3 okay so this works fine if the elements are positive if all the elements are greater than or equal to 0 it works well however this does not work well when the elements are less than 0 okay which can happen in case of returns so returns you can get negative returns so we will not be actually using this formula for the computation okay so but, but before that i want to introduce you to why we should use the geometric mean and not the arithmetic mean so i am saying that arithmetic mean is a bad measure for this computation take an example that you started the 
in investing in the stock market at time t equal to zero, or let's say on first January two thousand some eleven, let's say, okay, two thousand one, let's say, and in the first year your investment you received a bumper return of hundred percent, okay, so you invested dollar hundred, your dollar hundred has become dollar two hundred because of this hundred percent increase in the value, okay. What you find is next return the market were bad maybe because the economic slowdown was there government not did not take any good action so the next year the market tanked and you got minus fifty percent return so what happens is when you get minus fifty percent return on this two hundred dollars it will become hundred dollar okay so you started with hundred dollar over here after two years. You are back to square one. You are having hundred dollars. Okay. So if I want logical way to compute the return, logical way, what is the average return I have got? So you started with hundred. You are ending with hundred. So you will say that I have not got any return. So reality is this: you have not got any return. Okay. However, if you try to compute the arithmetic return. Or sorry, arithmetic mean or arithmetic average return. You will say the return I have got is hundred percent plus of negative fifty percent divided by two, which gives me twenty five percent as the average return. Which definitely you would now concur with me that it is wrong. So arithmetic mean return is not a useful measure for return measurement. Geometric mean return is a better measure, but. Now, just uh, now, I said that when x is less than zero, geometric mean return is not a meaningful. Uh, you cannot compute using this formula. If I am not able to compute using this formula, there are other ways to compute. The, uh, the other way is what we say is one plus the geometric mean. So let's say R G is equal to. So what here we are doing is we are replacing the geometric mean. So your geometric mean was equal to root over x1, x2, x3. This was a cube root. So what we have is one plus R G will put cube root and one plus R1, which is the return in the first period, one plus R2 return in the second period, one plus R3 return in the third period. So what I am doing is I am adding each of these returns by one. Okay. Please note that many people will say that this one is added to make this. Uh, Return positive because when return maximum uh, minimum return value can be minus hundred percent. In that case, it will become zero. In this case, if you add one plus minus fifty percent, which is one minus point five, so it becomes point five. So you are getting a positive value, right? So many people will say that it is to get a positive value. However, the theory is that we are using the concept of compounding. And in compounding, we know that a is equal to one plus p into one plus r to the power of n. So you are trying to multiply with the one plus r. So that is the idea over here. So we are using actually compounding. So if you want to see one plus the geometric mean for two period, it would be given as square root of one plus r one. In this case, r one is our hundred percent. So one plus hundred percent into one plus Minus fifty percent, correct? In this case, it will become root of one plus one into one minus point five, which is root of two into point five, which is root of one. And we know that root of one is equal to one. So one plus the geometric mean is equal to one. So it will give you the data of geometric mean as zero. So you can say that. The average return that we have produced is zero percent, which is what we think, which is what we have seen. Since the return is zero, so average return is zero percent. So what we have is we should rely on geometric mean for all the return computation. Okay. Now, how do you perform this calculation in your Excel? Okay. So what we are trying to do is please understand over here what is being done. We are trying to get the geometric mean of these values. Okay, so we are getting the geometric mean of one plus r one, one plus r two. All these values we are getting, and at the end we are taking the geometric mean. So there is an Excel formula function which is known as geometric mean, geo mean. 
you will compute geo mean and note that from there you have to deduct the minus 1 so this minus 1 should go over here so geo mean minus 1 will give you the actual values let us see to apply over here okay so we are want to find out the return so what i can do is first of all i will say that i will compute 1 plus this return okay i have got this and then as i know that i can extend this all so we have got all of this as 1 plus now what i would do is i will use this so better way to do is like see this okay so geo mean so if you press over here it says that return the geometric mean of an array or range of positive numeric data see they are saying positive numeric data that is why we had to add this one so we'll select geometric mean and they are saying that number one column comma number two etc so number one is important number two is inside this uh, square bracket which is optional but what i can do is i can put this comma this comma this comma this comma this and end it it will give me the value okay however this is a very crude way to compute these values okay a better way to do is again your drag and drop okay so if you drag drop this it will give you the value so the it is please note that has given only the geometric mean but not the geometric mean return for return we had to do the minus one so we'll do the minus one and we got this answer so what we have is I will not use this formula I will use this because this is a better way of using the Excel okay so this is our formula now this has given so much more value what we have is we can reduce this decimal like this we can reduce or since already we have this as the two decimal places we can select the format painter go over here and we got get this written 3.21 if you want to increase the precision you can get this so if you see over here it is 3.208 here it is 9.74 you can understand the difference so average mean arithmetic average is not a good way to compute this okay this geometric mean is a better way of computation i hope this is clear this is ratan gupta from